Hello and good Saturday morning, everybody. Chris Allen here on the Sam channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X all sponsored by ACE hardware marketplace Memorial day weekend. Welcome today is going to be the pick out of any of the days this weekend. Uh, or you could include yesterday, but today I think, uh, you're going to be fine. There have been a few showers. Of course, we had some thunderstorms overnight, but uh, even though we heard some thunder, saw some lightning, and there were some heavy downpours of rain, I mean, not much else came from that. And I mentioned last night on the uh, on News 40 that we would have some overnight thunderstorms, and that was about it. It put down some a pretty good rainfall. We'll look at some of the numbers here in just a second. First, let's check out the Plano cam here from my home base this morning in Plano, Kentucky. We're seeing uh, some morning sun through the clouds. And uh, today is going to be um, really not that bad of a day, although there will be some cloud cover at times today. We will see some sun at times, and we will also see a chance a lingering chance of a shower or two at times, but I'm not anticipating any severe weather today. Uh, somebody might get a shower or thunderstorm at some point today, uh, either this morning or this afternoon, but really we're just kind of waiting on, uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. And if it turns out to be something that is going to become more significant, which I'll detail here in just a second, uh, we still need to keep our, our guard up here. It appears, uh, let's check out the live cam AAA systems from downtown Bowling Green high atop reservoir Hill. And there you see downtown Bowling Green with the uh, mainly cloudy sky and a little bit of morning sun kind of like here in Plano. Um, it's just a typical late spring, early summer morning. Not much is happening. Uh, shower activity is just uh, down to the south of us, which I'll show you on radar. And uh, I think uh, any showers today will not be of the type that you'll have to be on guard about. So if you're planning on going to the lake or maybe a cookout or some outdoor activity, I think you should be fine just to... Uh, be aware that there could be a shower or thunderstorm that shows up, uh, really any place, any time, but more likely during the afternoon hours, uh, here in Southern Kentucky and, uh, portions of Northern middle Tennessee. All right, here we go with the maps. You can see that, uh, the winds are fairly light this morning, five to seven to eight miles per hour, all pretty, pretty calm this morning. We go to radar. And we're seeing some of those showers that, uh, have developed. This is the cluster that came through overnight last night. It's moved off to the South and East, uh, weak cold front is, uh, pushing through the area and it's sparking up some of these showers and thunderstorms. Looks like there's a shower thunderstorm there around Auburn. Here's Bowling Green. You see Auburn there. That's 6880 into Russellville. You see some showers just north of Franklin as you're uh, traveling uh, 31W and I-65. Uh, but these are just little, you see little pockets of shower activity and a couple of thunderstorms. Some maybe brief heavy rain there between Russellville and Auburn. Uh, but the extent of that is not, uh, it's not anything that's serious. Uh, you see more showers developing to the north and moving southeast with the front up around the Ohio River from Tell City, Indiana to Hardensburg, almost down to Litchfield. As you travel uh, 259 and go north, uh, you're going to run into some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms. We take a much bigger picture here, and you can see how everything, this is everything that came through early this morning, and overnight it's pushing off to the southeast. It's down in around Nashville and Chattanooga to Knoxville. They're getting all the thunderstorms down to Huntsville, Alabama, Birmingham. Um, the next wave that is coming in tomorrow, though, is still way out here to the west. This is the energy way out in Nevada uh, and coming in off the coastal 
California region uh, that is going to kick into high gear uh, tomorrow and pick up on some Gulf moisture. And that's for what could be a very stormy day uh, tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon and evening. Here's a look at the, the high resolution satellite view. You can see that much of the plains today is uh, very sunny, but the target zone today is going to be right here from about Kansas, south of Kansas City and Salina, Kansas, Salina, 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 Wichita, <laughs> uh, down to Oklahoma City. That's really where the bullseye today is going to be for maybe long track tornadoes. That energy coming in is going to uh, build thunderstorms that are not there yet, but they will be. Uh, and it's going to be a very significant day for Oklahoma today. Unfortunately, if you know anybody out there, Oklahoma city, Tulsa, Bartlesville, Enid, uh, it's, it's not good. It's not going to be a good day out there. Uh, you can see the cloud cover that's over Southern Kentucky this morning, scattered clouds, a little bit of morning sun and those scattered thunderstorms that are around. And, uh, it looks like we may see a period of sunshine coming through, um, as we get in to the afternoon and that's when you should be fine. The atmosphere will be capped off. So I'm not really too concerned about, uh, the sun being out today because we will have a lid of warm air on the atmosphere, which should cap off any big thunderstorm activity. There could be a few showers that pop up in the afternoon and, uh, just be aware of that, you know, have some way to monitor the weather, have the news 40 weather app, something with you. If you're out on the boat or out on the lake or at a cookout or whatever, you've got some way to monitor the weather and just, um, keep up with it. So you're not caught off guard. Okay. That's the, uh, that's my best advice for today. Uh, let's check the Kentucky Mesonet this morning because it's going to show us temperature and wind and rainfall that we have seen, uh, over the last, uh, 24 hours or so temperatures this morning here at the current time is just before seven o'clock central time. And, uh, temperatures are typically in the mid sixties. We're starting to see some seventies now showing up in Western Kentucky, but you can see a lot of mid sixties right now. Uh, precipitation, let's go past 24 hours. And you can see that the Southern half of Warren County in the Bowling Green area picked up over an inch and a half of rain. That's from overnight. Pretty incredible, huh? Yeah, it was that much rain. Uh, while the Northern end of the County and the mesonet sensor up at the Corvette plant only picked up barely a half inch of rain. So it was in this little swath here, Southern edge of the County down into, uh, Allen County, Scottsville area, uh, inch and four tenths plus there. Then a little spot over here, uh, looks like Burksville picked up an inch and a third, just about everybody else picked up less than that. And then there were some places that didn't get a drop of rain last night from those showers and thunderstorms. So we're going to continue to add to the totals. I mean, it's, um, uh, it's been incredible how much rain that we've received lately. Uh, and, and, the, and there's more to come. Winds are coming out of primarily out of the South, uh, light at three to five miles per hour. Uh, any kind of breezes, not really, not much of a breeze out there. The winds will pick up though this afternoon as some of those showers and thunderstorms will try to work in here. Dew points. Yeah, they're up there mid to upper sixties, even close to 70. Uh, so the air is thick, the air is humid, and it's going to be another one of those days that when it does rain, if you do happen to get a thunderstorm or a shower, it, it's going to rain hard. Even if it's only for about five minutes, it's going to rain hard. So I want you to keep that in mind, please. It's a holiday weekend. 
There's going to be lightning. The lightning's going to be intense. It's going to strike, you know, trees and objects around you. Uh, the wind could blow for a few minutes very hard. And uh, if you're out on a lake on a boat and you're not near shore, that could be a problem. Just warning you, okay? Be aware. And you know what I'm going to say? Have the News 40 weather app on your phone. That way you can just quickly look at the radar. You can see if any bulletins have popped up. You can see lightning detection. It's all right there. Okay, now let's get to the future and what it holds as far as uh, later on and through the weekend into Memorial Day. Here's a look at the model blender. I don't see any big wholesale changes coming anytime soon as far as temperature. We're going to see upper 70s, low to mid 80s all the way through into next week and next weekend, which is the first weekend of June. It's it's just what it is. It's not going to change. So we're, we're looking good there. I'm not uh, looking at any big temperature swings either way, uh, here for Southern Kentucky. Okay. Now let's get to the maps and the threat of severe weather for tomorrow, because I know that's, that's going to be something that we're all interested in seeing and knowing, uh, and it still is on the table. Okay. Here's a look at what's going on today and the right now. With the scattered showers in the area, there's our cold front, which is really, it it may try to come through Bowling Green, but it's going to come back the tail end of this with these ripples of low pressure along the front are going to make this thing wobble back and forth. And it's going to, the tail end of this is going to become our next weather maker. So scattered showers perhaps even a thunderstorm or two this morning, but much of that has already faded away or has moved down into Tennessee. Now here's the front and you see the back end of the front then becoming, you know, quasi stationary, but then mostly a warm front as a new low pressure system. That's back to the West. This is the one and look, it's at 996 millibar. So it's strengthening. This is the one over the Rockies that is going to be that piece of energy that comes in for tomorrow and sets us up for the potential for severe weather. Uh, here we go into the afternoon and into this evening, pretty quiet along and east of 65. There could be some renegade showers or thunderstorms this afternoon, but none of those are expected to be, uh, severe. They could produce some heavy rain. That's it. Now here's, here comes our low. You can see it off screen almost here. And that, low intensifies to 992 millibar. So it's gaining strength as it moves in and you see the big red zone here back to the West, Oklahoma city and those places that I told you earlier, that's where the severe weather threat is going to be for today and tonight and even part of tomorrow. Now as the front lingers just along the Ohio river, here comes our low. It's now at 996 millibar. This is uh, tomorrow morning, early. And then here comes the system as it moves to the east. We'll get showers and thunderstorms, first wave coming in tomorrow morning. Though the first wave doesn't appear to be severe. I mean, there could be some renegade thunderstorms that reach uh, severe limits, maybe with a warning or something like that, but... Uh, this morning convection is going to be elevated in that it's a warm front and it's going to elevate those thunderstorms instead of being ground based or, uh, daytime heating based type thunderstorms. These will be elevated more up into the clouds. And so, yeah, you'll get thunderstorms and rain, but they won't be the kind that you'll have to be too worried about. These will be, uh, just kind of scattered in the morning and mostly to the west and north of Bowling Green. So let's get into Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. Here comes a dry, that's a dry line, and we don't normally see those here. This is more of a Texas thing uh, because of where they are, but that's a dry line. 
And even though it's not dry, it is a line that, that is more like an outflow boundary that is going to be that trigger ahead of the cold front, which could trigger these potentially severe thunderstorms tomorrow evening. And this would be primarily around dark or after dark. Yeah, I know. I don't like that either. You see that they've got the red zone here, more West Tennessee, Eastern Arkansas, Northern Mississippi, but yeah, I, we're going to be included in that. There's no way really to, uh, hide from it or get away from it. Uh, here we go into early Monday morning, lingering thunderstorms. And some of those still could be strong, maybe intense as the front finally starts to make some headway and move east. Now, by Monday afternoon, I think we'll be in the clear and maybe even clear enough to where you can salvage part of your Memorial Day Monday afternoon with some sun and maybe time for one last cookout or, you know, uh, spend some time at the lake. It's possible. Here we go into Tuesday. High pressure's in control. Everything's looking good here Wednesday. Now we're seeing some more rain coming in from the West and, uh, it's going to stay West of us until we get on in to late week next week, the last, uh, few days of May and into the first weekend of June, here comes another wave of rain as we get into next Friday. So hopefully that way you've seen that you can pretty much kind of get a feel for what you need to do, uh, tomorrow and plan. I, as I always say, plan around the storms. Okay. Storms should be, I know I hate to say your first priority because it's a Memorial day weekend. You want to spend time with friends and family. Those of you that on that own boats or pontoons or whatever, or campers or you, that's, that's the thing you want to spend time with family. You're off work. That should be your priority. And of course, in memoriam to those who have served and are serving now and those in memoriam that have, uh, fought and died for our American freedoms. That should be what you think about. But I, I just really implore you to think about the weather, uh, not to be just worried and pacing the floor and concerned like that, but just be aware and prepared for just in case, uh, things do get out of hand tomorrow. That's my best advice. I would not put off any plans really. Um, unless we just all of a sudden you hear us say, don't even, don't even go out, but we're not saying that I'm just saying you, you need to be careful. Okay. Okay. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty and the threat for severe weather. Here's the threat for today. It's over the South central plains. As you can see, there's a bullseye right there. The same area that I talked about earlier, Southern, uh, Kansas and into central Oklahoma, that red zone area. That is a moderate risk for severe storms and tornadoes today. That's where it will be located. All right. Now let's go into the state of Kentucky. And here you see today is just, eh, eh, not really a threat here. No tornado threat today. You know, nothing. Okay. Now let's get into tomorrow. I just wanted you to see that so that you know that everything's okay today, even though there may be a few thunderstorms around, we're okay. Now this is tomorrow, primarily tomorrow afternoon and evening bowling green and much of the state of Kentucky is under a level three enhanced risk. Okay. That means there is a greater probability of not only damaging wind, large hail, flooding rains, but also a threat for a tornado. Now, what's the threat for tornadoes? 
here it is. Now you see we're kind of in the, I mean, mostly in the lower category, uh, or not the lowest, but five to 9% chance of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of a point. You are the point. Okay. So think about 25 miles around you (laughs) and it's, it's a pretty good area, 25 miles or even more than that. So if you live in Bowling Green, 25 miles away from you would be Russellville, would be Glasgow, would be Brownsville. You get the idea. Um, but that's a low chance. That's a low end chance. Uh, things are, I hate to say looking a little better. I don't want to get you off guard here. It's what I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, you know, make sure you understand the risk is still there, but, uh, maybe it's not quite as bad from a tornado perspective as maybe what we were looking at yesterday. Uh, even though we were still in that lower category, um, there may be a lot of energy spent west of us before the threat gets here and becomes more relevant. But again, I don't want to say that and you let your guard down because, oh, Chris says it's going to be okay. I did not say that. Back up the tape. (laughs) I did not say that. But there there are other threats that we're going to have to be aware of and that one of them is damaging wind that has not changed and you can see that we're in this kind of magenta pink shaded area that's a 30 to 44 percent chance that you are going to get wind damage and that hatched area adds another 10 percent or so to that 10 percent more likely that you're going to get wind damage in other words So it's just a, that hatched area is what the storm prediction center uses to highlight. Not only is there a risk, but there's a greater risk of damaging straight line winds. How about hail? Well, on the low end, greater, uh, hail chances for larger hail is back around St. Louis, uh, parts of Missouri, Illinois, maybe over to Indianapolis. And that's a problem because guess what is happening tomorrow, right? The Indianapolis 500, which you can see on NBC 40, uh, they're, <laughs> they have already made preparation because they know that they're, it's going to be touch and go for the Indy 500 tomorrow because of the weather. And then as we get into Memorial day, Monday, the weather threat, severe weather threat moves East. So. But tomorrow, that's that's going to be the prime time for uh, getting the possibility of severe weather. It's still on the table. There is, yes, there is usually always what we call a bust factor, where something happens with the atmosphere, maybe uh, the cap or the lid of warm air in the atmosphere doesn't break but it's going to be kind of hard not to break it because there's going to be that, that, uh, outflow boundary, that dry line type situation, uh, that's going to be a trigger. The cold front itself is going to be a trigger. Enough daytime heating is going to be a trigger because we're going to be right at 90 tomorrow in between the morning thunderstorms and the afternoon thunderstorms. We could for the first time this year hit 90 degrees. And that would be convective heating is what we call that. So there's just too many ifs, ands, and buts uh, that could uh, change the whole dynamic of this system tomorrow. So that's why I need you to please download the News 40 weather app. I have it right there. In fact, it just gave me, I wish I could have showed you that. Uh, it just, it just showed me that there's lightning within, it just gave me a lightning detection. Wait a minute. See that right there. Wait a minute. Look, 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 let me get it. I know it's out of focus, but see, 
it says lightning. Oh, lightning has been detected within 15 miles of home. I'm going to click that. And yeah, there it shows, you know, what's coming. This is the radar that's on the app and it shows that there's, um, there's some lightning within those thunderstorms that are coming into the Bowling Green area. It's very cool to have this and it'll follow you wherever you go. So yeah, uh, keep that with you on your phone, your tablet, iPad. It doesn't matter both Android and iPhone. It will, uh, serve you well. And that way, if you're out on the boat or doing a cookout or at a camp, you're camping out or something for the weekend, you will know exactly what's going on. The other thing to do is to have a weather radio with you. Okay. You can get these at ACE Hardware, right up there at the top, right there. ACE Hardware. All ACE Hardware stores have the weather radios. And somebody there, most most usually at every store, knows how to program it. Okay. I will do another one of these updates in the morning. Probably around this time, maybe a little bit before this, this time, before I go to church. Uh with all the latest information, the weather service is going to do another conference call this afternoon, about three o'clock. I'll be listening to that and I'm not going anywhere for the holiday weekend. I'll be here and I'll be at work on Monday. So we're going to, we're going to get through this together. Let's hope and pray cross fingers, toes and everything else. And, you know, pray that, uh, this stuff doesn't happen somehow it goes bust, but even if it does happen, you'll be prepared and you'll be ready. I guarantee if you just followed everything I just said, you'll be good. God bless you. Have a great and safe Memorial day weekend. And again, salute to all the men and women who have gone on before us. That's what Memorial day is all about. And we thank them for their service. God bless you. Have a great one.